All eyes will be on quarterbacks past and present for your New England Patriots on Sunday against the Philadelphia Eagles. But the key to winning this matchup is whether or not the Patriots can run the ball with Ramondre Stevenson and Zeke Elliott. The bigger question is whether or not they can get the blocking to do it. Stick around. You're about to be locked in to Crossover Thursday here on the Locked On Patriots podcast. You are Locked On Patriots, your daily New England Patriots podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello to all of you, Foxborough faithful. Thank you once again for making Locked On Patriots a daily part of your New England Patriots coverage. Don't forget that we are a proud part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Subscribe or follow for free on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts to make sure that you're getting the latest episode as soon as it's available. I am your host, Mike DeBate, and I cover your New England Patriots for Patriots Country of Sports Illustrated. So reach out to me and let me know what's on your mind on Twitter, on X, on the Bird app at M-D-A-B-A-T-E-N-F-L. And Pats fans, today's Crossover Thursday episode is brought to you by Prize Picks the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL and use code all lowercase locked on NFL for a first deposit match up to $100. That's fans. Thank you so much for joining me here today on crossover Thursday. That's right. It's the time of year again, where it's time to cross the streams and joining me here today in just a moment is going to be my colleague here at the locked on podcast network co-host of Locked On Eagles, and he just happens to be a fellow Paisan to boot. Gino Camilleri joins me today, and we're going to be talking all things Patriots-Eagles, matchups to watch in this one, the biggest storylines heading out of both cities, and of course, we're going to give you our game predictions and keys to victories. Stay locked in, folks, because you're about to enter Crossover Thursday here on the Locked On Podcast Network. Patriots fans and Eagles fans, welcome to this Locked On Crossover Thursday portion of today's episode of Locked On Patriots and Locked On Eagles. I'm Mike DeBate, host of the Locked On Patriots podcast, and joining me is my cohort in crime today, the co-host of Locked On Eagles and just happens to be also my paisan, Gino Camilleri joins me today. Gino, this has been one I've been waiting for for quite a while. Pats fans are excited. Eagles fans are excited. This Sunday, Gillette Stadium, Tom Brady Appreciation Day. What more can you ask for to have the NFC champions come into town to face the New England Patriots at home? It's one that I think everybody is excited for. I think everybody in Philadelphia remembers 2017 and that 2018 Super Bowl. I'm wearing my underdog shirt right now. (laughs) They remember 2004, 2005, crying after Terrell Owens and that team couldn't get it done. This is one of those kind of rivalries that goes under the radar a little bit, but I think everybody that knows these games and even the 2015 game when the Eagles were not a great team and coming to Foxborough and upset that really good Tom Brady team, there's been some fantastic games. And I think this one's going to hit home as another classic in this series. Oh, without question. This is always a fun matchup and you have two passionate fan bases. Uh, You've got two teams with steep, rich histories. Uh, Obviously, you mentioned 2017 to 2018. Those teams are definitely um, top of mind for New England Patriots fans as well. Uh, We definitely remember the Philly special, but, uh, you know, we have some fond memories of Super Bowl 39 as well. So kind of goes both ways, but we're looking forward to another what we hope to be instant classic at Gillette Stadium on Sunday. And Gino, you know as well as I that heading into this game, there's always one story that stands out above the rest. You guys being the visitors, I'm going to give the NFC champs a chance to go first. What would you say is the biggest story coming out of Philadelphia right now as the Pats prepare to take on the Eagles? I would say, and I'm sure that Patriots fans have seen this time and time again, the Super Bowl hangover. What happens when you lose a Super Bowl? It's tough to stomach. And especially when you lose a ton of starters on defense, Mm -hmm. the Eagles, they lose their offensive coordinator and their defensive coordinator, lose a boatload of starters on defense. But then you turn around and Howie Roseman assembles a pretty darn good roster and many are picking them to be the one seed in the NFC and the team to once again represent the NFC in the Super Bowl. And I think it comes down to who Bill Belichick said today was a top three player in the league, Jalen Hurts. Can he continue that rise? 
because you look at the other side of the ball with Mac Jones, you're in a division where you're competing against great quarterbacks. Right. In the NFC East, teams are now trying to keep up with Jalen Hurts and this Eagles team, but it runs through the quarterback. Tom Brady led that team to six Super Bowls. You know how important it is. And the Eagles are trying to find somebody that can even give them maybe just one more because Nick Foles doesn't come around basically ever in the National Football League. It's lightning in a bottle. They need to find a way to become consistent. And this week one matchup would be a great way to show that the Super Bowls in the past, how can this 2023 team cement their personality that we are beyond 2022? There's four guys from the 2017 team here. It's a completely new era in Philadelphia. And they're going to take on a coach who is still trying to do things the same way he's done for almost 30 years. And it's kept him in the National Football League. And how do you game plan against that, especially with a young coaching staff that Nick Sirianni has? Yeah, without any question. Bill Belichick spoke glowingly on Wednesday morning about the Philadelphia Eagles. He's typically, I should say, effusive in his praise for mm. opponents, but this is one of those days where Bill Belichick really elaborated on the prowess that a team coming into Foxborough has. And when he does that, you know there's a mutual level of respect there, um, and with good reason. Uh, this is a team that employs one of the best quarterbacks in the league in Jalen Hurts, three potent pass catchers. Hurts is a weapon on the ground as well. You add DeAndre Swift into that mix. It's going to be a tough matchup for the New England Patriots. And we haven't even talked about the defensive side of the ball yet. And Fletcher Cox and that lethal front seven. And I know we're going to get into that in just a moment. So for the New England Patriots, on the other hand, it's trying to get back to respectability. One of the biggest things that the Patriots are going to have to prove is that the offensive woes that they had under the Matt Patricia, Joe Judge regime last year are a thing of the past. Bill O'Brien has taken control of this offense with Bill Belichick's blessing. What does it mean for Mac Jones? Is he still getting confused by those third, second level blitzes that are being sent from teams with very aggressive defensive fronts? Is he opening at the top of his drop in the wrong direction? And if that's the case, he's going to continue to have problems. If it's not, and Mac is utilizing the field a little bit better, and he's doing what he's done throughout training camp now, which is being more comfortable, be more decisive under the tutelage of Bill O'Brien, releasing the ball quickly, delivering it accurately, and using the run to facilitate play action. If the Patriots are doing these things, then you know that those offensive woes are behind them. If they're not, it's going to be a long season in New England, and there are going to be a lot of upset Patriots fans in the stands um, on Sunday and beyond. So to me, that's the biggest story coming out of New England right now is going to be the rebirth of the Patriots offense. Gino, you know as well as I do, it's fun to talk about big storylines, but these games ultimately come down to the matchups. And we've already drilled down a little bit into what some of these matchups may look like. Gino and I are going to drill down a little further and tell you which matchups could end up deciding this week one matchup in Foxborough, Massachusetts on Sunday. More on this crossover Thursday. Locked on Patriots, Locked on Eagles, Mike DeBate, Gino Camilleri, right here on the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Before we get into yet some more great discussion points here at the Lockdown Eagles and Lockdown Patriots crossover, we have a message from our friends over at Prize Picks. Yes, they're back, folks. But if you haven't heard about Prize Picks, I'll tell you what it is it's a skill based, real money daily fantasy sports game. How does it work? You pick two to six players, say, will they go more or less than their prize picks projections? And with that, you can win up to 25 times your money on entry. It's so easy. If you don't want to go into these big, long fantasy drafts and have to do all this research, just go on to prize picks, make two picks, six picks in less than 60 seconds. This week, I'm riding with Saquon Barkley for more than 60 yards on the ground and Patrick Mahomes for more than two passing touchdowns. I think even with Travis Kelsey potentially being injured in that game, you know Andy Reid is going to come out firing. And you can make those same selections over at prize picks make sure you go to prizepicks.com slash locked on nfl and use code locked on nfl for a deposit match up to 100 dollars. if you put in 100 dollars, they will give you 100 dollars. what is better than that it's simple easy and fun to play thank you to prize picks for being a great sponsor here of crossover thursday at the lockdown podcast network Pets fans and Eagles fans, thank you once again for taking time out of your day to join us here on this Locked On Crossover Thursday. 
crossing the streams between Locked On Patriots and Locked On Eagles. It's a ton of fun so far, folks. Two amazingly passionate fan bases, two great fan bases. The cheesesteak versus the chowder. It's going to be a fun one on Sunday in New England. But, you know, prior to the break, we talked a lot about the big storylines that are coming out of Philadelphia and that are coming out of New England. We talked a lot about Super Bowl hangovers and Mac Jones and Bill O'Brien trying to recapture some glory of the Patriots offense, the remnants of a proud Patriots offense years ago. Um, and the Eagles trying to break through and make their own glory and their own history moving forward. But we both know that in order for each team to fulfill their big story, they have to win key matchups. And this game, fortunately for us, is full of key matchups, matchups that could decide the fate from one way or another. But here at the Locked On Podcast Network, we choose to make things a little more difficult on ourselves, folks. And we're going to try to narrow down that matchup that could decide the game. Once again, as the visitor, we like to extend our hospitality here in New England. What would you say is the key matchup in this game that might decide the outcome on Sunday? I think if you're going to have to look at it from an Eagles perspective, it's how can they take advantage of the Patriots putting Riley Reef on the injured reserve just a few days before this game. I don't know who is going to start there. Maybe you have better inclination if it's going to be potentially City Sow. Maybe you don't want to give away the trade secrets, which I'm sure Bill Belichick didn't do either. <laughs> but regardless of who it is, the identity of what the Philadelphia Eagles were last year was predicated on the defensive line, which it's been for nearly three decades now. But at the same time, their coverage element on the outside was so good. I think the matchups on the outside, it's going to be like a boxing match. Like Juju will win some against James Bradbury, Slay, and that whole group. There will be some hits and misses some places, but I think at that right tackle position, it has to be all game that Hassan Riddick, that Josh Sweat, that Nolan Smith, whoever is lined up over the right tackle, makes Mac Jones come off of his first read to be susceptible to those second-level blitzes, like you said. How do you get those guys to hit home from the second level? Quarterback's got to hold on to the ball for a little bit longer. How do you do that? Well, if he's a righty quarterback looking to the right side of the field, get in his face, make him go to his second and third read. I think that those guys know how important they are to this team, and they are the constant. Hassan Riddick, Josh Sweat, those guys are the constant on this defensive line. There's a lot of turnover. Javon Hargrave and Dominican Sue, Lynn Ball Joseph, those guys are no longer there. Fletcher Cox won't play as much as he did in the past. It's going to be on those young pass rushers, and they're going to have to win the battle on the left side against Trent Brown, too. But I really think it comes down to how does Bill look to counteract that known weakness on his offensive line? He's great at doing that, but the Eagles have the guys and the horses that could probably counteract as much game planning as you want to, because Hassan Riddick should have won defensive player of the year last year. And mm -hmm. Matthew Judon is probably a clone of Hassan Riddick. You know how great he is and instrumental for, he is for new England. That's really what he is to Philadelphia. So he wins those one-on-ones. I think it'll be a long day for Mac Jones, but if not, you get back into what you were talking about in segment one, Mike, they get on schedule. Bill Belichick is going to have his team on rhythm. They're going to limit the penalties. They're going to, convert in big time situations you have to get a team like that off schedule absolutely so well said and i'm glad you mentioned matthew judon because i am going to come back to him in just a couple of seconds but your questions on the offensive line are questions that we have here in new england right now with regard to who is going to be manning the right side of that line um with riley reef now on injured reserve you know it's not going to be him Calvin Anderson is coming back from an undisclosed illness. He was on non-football illness uh, list for the hmm. entirety of training camp and well into the preseason. Came off it just before uh, roster cutdowns last week. So the learning curve right now for him is going to be very, very steep in order for him to catch up and get into rhythm uh, to be able to take on that Eagles defensive front. It's not going to be an easy task. You're talking Tyrone Wheatley and Verdarian Lowe that just came in here. I think it's going to be a lot to ask them to step in and be, uh, you know, formidable forces on that right side. So now you're looking at a pair of rookies, maybe City South comes in and does what he needs to do. Maybe Antonio Maffi comes in and plays guard and Michael Wainu kicks out to tackle. There's a lot of different ways that the Patriots could play it, but I agree with you. That could be a matchup that does decide this game. 
because if you're protecting Mac Jones and he has time, he might be able to hit his targets. And then you start to give the Patriots a puncher's chance. But you mentioned Judon, and to me, I think this is the key matchup for the New England Patriots to win. If they're going to try to go after this, they need to be aggressive on defense because I think they win this game on defense more than they win it with their offense. And I'm going with Matthew Judon against the Eagles' pass protection. And I want to give a slight tip of the cap to Honest NFL, who got me thinking about this with a couple of tweets earlier on this week. Matthew is at his best off the left edge. That's really where he does his mm-hmm. best work and I think really shows his prowess as a premier pass rusher in this league. That's exactly the spot you don't want to be playing. If you're a pass rush specialist and you're going against the Eagles, that's where they're at their best. So do you send your best pass rusher, unarguably, because Matthew Judon is just that, into the lion's den and into an area where the Eagles are so good at being able to you know, protect against that. In order to maximize Matthew's prowess, I'm wondering if maybe they try deploying him on the other side. It might be a little bit unorthodox. It might be a little bit against the grain, but we've known Bill Belichick to do things like this. I think trying to beat Lane Johnson to a spot is a tougher task for the New England Patriots mm-hmm. and Matthew Judon. So I think Bill Belichick is going to throw a lot at the Eagles pressure-wise because I think the only way the Patriots are going to be able to win this game or at least keep it marginally close is if they try to make the Eagles look like an average offense with that pressure. It's not an easy task, and it's going to be very difficult, but the Patriots are going to try it. So if Matthew Judon is commanding the attention of multiple members of that line, it could free up rushers like Josh Uche, like Dietrich Wise Jr., and look for the rookie Keon White to get in on the act as well, folks. He has been a heat-seeking missile in the preseason so far he's facing the toughest defense he's ever faced without question maybe the toughest defense in the league in recent years so keep a sharp eye out on the patriots pass rush especially judon if they can win this matchup it could tilt the scale in favor of the new england patriots on sunday it won't be easy and i think josh uche as good as the eagles have depth in that second punch on their edge Uche's versatility and his ability to just create havoc from anywhere as well as Matthew Judon and we talked about that on our show and it's like you're reading our minds like where do they deploy these guys we're almost at that time folks Gino and I are going to tip our hand which players are catching our sharp eye on Sunday and how do we think this is all going to shake out in Foxborough game predictions key players so much more When this Locked On crossover Thursday between Locked On Patriots and Locked On Eagles continues in just a moment right here on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Locked On listeners, these days, every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. You want to be 100% certain that you have access to the best qualified candidates available. That's why you have to check out our good friends and sponsors for today's pod, LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps find the right people for your team faster and for free. Add your job and the purple hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you're hiring. Simple tools like screening questions make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and hire. It's why small businesses rate LinkedIn Jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus the leading competitors. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to, and they help you do it faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NFL. That's linkedin.com slash locked on NFL to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Pats fans, this Locked On crossover Thursday between Locked On Patriots and Locked On Eagles. Mike DeBate, your host of Locked On Patriots. Gino Camilleri, host of Locked On Eagles. One half of the hosting tandem, definitely missing Louis DiBiase today, but hopefully we've given you enough Paisan insight to help whet your appetite for this upcoming matchup. Gino, it's been a blast so far, but we're not quite done yet. Once again, as the visiting team, as the defending NFC champion and the favorite uh, in this game, when you look at the Philadelphia Eagles, what needs to go right for the Eagles to win this game on Sunday? For things to go right, it just plays Great fundamental football. As cliche as that sounds, one of the big question marks, I would say, is what is the crack in the foundation? And I think it comes down to tackling on the defensive side of the ball. These guys haven't really seen the field. I mean, they haven't seen a lot of play in the preseason. They haven't really seen game action since the Super Bowl. They need to come out there 
and keep everything predicated in the trenches and dominate where your general manager, where your coach, your defensive coordinator, offensive coordinator know you should dominate, and that's in the trenches. And what does that allow you to do? Well, when you win offensively in the trenches, that could keep you on schedule in the run game. It will allow Jalen Hurts to continue to excel as a passer. He's just getting better and better every year. If you keep that pocket clean for him, the sky's the limit. And defensively, it means taking away all of those things you want to do on offense from the Patriots offense. And Bill Belichick, he's as complex as some of his defenses might be. He gets down to the basics of football and he gets back to those fundamental things. And when you play good, fundamental free, penalty free football, you're going to win a lot of those games. And I think week one is where there's a lot more variance when it comes down to those things. Maybe a team isn't as disciplined as they should be. Assignments are going to be missed. Guys are going to fall start. You're probably going to have a 12 man on the field penalty at some point in this game. I think it's just whatever team can stay on schedule and play football just free, fast, and fun without any penalties is going to come away and win this game. And why I think it'll be Philadelphia is because of the guy driving the car. I compared Jalen Hurts all year to a Formula One car last year because they were putting pieces next to him, like A.J. Brown and Dallas Goddard and Devontae Smith, like putting a new engine in a car. But now he's the driver of the car. Like the car doesn't go anywhere without this guy. And I mean, goodness gracious, you had the equivalent of Lewis Hamilton in New England with Tom Brady winning all those championships. Well, hopefully Jalen Hurts could be that Max Verstappen, who's that next up and coming guy. And I really think that Bill Belichick, as much as he will praise teams, was not talking out of both sides of his mouth when he said that Jalen Hurts was a top three player in this league because he is. He is one of those guys, the Josh Allen, the next archetype of what it is to make a team play 12 men on offense where you have a running quarterback and a passing quarterback and make a defense play with one hand behind their back and essentially play with 10 guys. Jalen Hurts, he didn't have any nerves in the Super Bowl or any of the national championships. I don't know why I should have nerves going into this game as long as he is behind the quarterback position. I trust him, but I think it's going to be a, a pretty good game in terms of teams just converting on third down, getting on schedule. I think the Patriots are going to hit their shots. I think Ramondre Stevenson could be one of the most underrated guys in this game that we're not talking about because if he gets going, let's say he goes for a buck and two touchdowns, you know that Mac Jones probably hit for 250 and completed 75% of his passes. So just make the other team play bad football. You go out there and play easy football. <laughs> it's week one. You can't overcomplicate things. You just want to go see out there and see how the ones do. Yeah, without question. You talked about me reading your minds earlier. You just read mine uh, because to me, oh, the no key kidding. to New England winning this game, or at least having a shot to win this game, is from Andre Stevenson. You're going to have to hear that name an awful lot. Look, this Eagles defense was arguably the best in football a year ago. I believe it absolutely was. Some may argue differently. I think they're mm -hmm. wrong, but that's okay. Um, this team is as formidable as it gets without any question. But if there is an area where the New England Patriots could theoretically have some success against this Eagles defense, it's against the run. Philly allowed 121.6 yards per game last year, mm -hmm. 16th in the NFL, 4.64 yards per rush, 24th over the course of the entire season. The Patriots need to establish the run in order to be successful. That means a heavy dose of Ramondre Stevenson and a pretty good dose of Ezekiel Elliott, someone you and Dewey are very used Sweet. to seeing with all of those years in Dallas. So this is what has to happen for the Patriots to be effective. You're going to get a heavy dose of Ramondre at the top of the heap and Ezekiel trying to come in and play that second back that's going to be able to help spell him a little bit and take some of the pressure off. But to me, the bigger question is whether or not the Patriots can find ways to block that daunting Eagles defensive front. It's a lot easier said than done to say that Ramondre Stevenson and Ezekiel Elliott need to get some sort of traction. It's another thing to get the blocking up front. And it's not just Fletcher Cox. It's not just Jordan Davis. It's not just Jalen Carter as a rookie coming in there and disrupting things. And I know I'm leaving a lot of names out, folks. Mm -hmm. There are that many names that can really impact you're talking about linebackers like Zach Cunningham and Kobe Dean, someone I was salivating over for the New England Patriots to get their hands on a couple of years ago in the draft, trying to find ways to stack that defense and prevent the Patriots from being able to run on it. If he can figure out a way to do it early, 
New England Patriots may not be able to gain the traction they need to even keep this one competitive, let alone win it. But if the Patriots can do it, I think they have a good puncher's chance here. So, Gino, we're at that time, my friend. It is time to make our game predictions and really anger one fan base or the other at this point. So I'm going to let you go first. At the end of the day, who comes out on top on this one, Eagles or Patriots, and why? Well, I'll say this. This will be the only game I'm rooting against the Patriots. I am the biggest enemy of the Buffalo Bills that you will ever see. I know your fans will appreciate that. I can't stand them. But I believe the Eagles are the better suited team in this matchup. I think you you said, can they stand a fighting chance in a boxing match? It might go back and forth for a couple rounds, but you see those times when it's just a superior fighter that as it goes on in those eighth, ninth, and 10th rounds, that's where the Eagles made their money last year. They made their money closing out games in the fourth quarter. They would get that lead. They would hold on to it in the run game. I'm not saying that New England isn't going to stand a chance. I just think the Eagles are going to do what they have to at the end of the game to solidify things. I think they cover the four and a half. And at the end of the day, I think 31-21 should be right in your wheelhouse. I think Ramondre is going to have success. I think both run games are going to have big days. And it's week one. I think a lot of points are going to be scored in this one. And definitely take the over at FanDuel. And I'm riding with the Eagles minus four and a half. But after that, just go beat Buffalo. That's all I got to say. <laughs> well, from your lips to God's ears when it comes to New England. And you just made some fans in New England by saying that <laughs> without any question. And uh, I hope I've given Philly the respect that I definitely have definitely in my so. heart for them. Uh, because this is, in my opinion, the best team in the league. And it's going to be a hell of a test for Mac Jones for this young Patriots team with a lot of young stars on both sides of the ball trying to compete and trying to forge their own identity. I think the Patriots can keep this close if the running game can give Mac Jones some relief. If the play action can be facilitated by a strong running game by Ramondre Stevenson and Ezekiel Elliott. But at the end of the day, that Eagles front seven is just too fearsome for the Patriots to overcome. It's going to allow the Eagles secondary led by Darius Slay to be able to make things difficult for the Pats pass catchers in terms of getting open, finding their routes. And then, of course, on the flip side of the ball, I think it's going to be very difficult to shut down an offense that can beat you in so many different ways. Name we haven't mentioned all that much here. Take a look at Kyle Duggar and Dallas Goddard. That's going to be another matchup to watch, folks. Kyle Duggar is very good at being able to take away opponents' tight ends. Dallas, one of the best in the league. I'm looking for that to be a matchup that might be a secondary matchup to watch in this one. But ultimately, I think the Eagles are just too good. The Patriots keep this one close but they bow out to the defending NFC champs on this 24 to 20 on Sunday. Good cover. Hey, great teams cover, man. That's what matters. That's what matters. Absolutely. Gino, this was absolutely a blast. Uh, We've been looking forward to doing this locked on Patriots, locked on Eagles crossover for quite some time. We finally got it this year. Locked on Patriots is going to continue to bring you all of the latest coverage here from Foxborough. Gino, before we go, let all of the locked on Eagles fans know what they can expect for the rest of the week coming up before we take our leave of today's Locked On crossover uh, Thursday. For our fans over at LOE, we return with the great redemption story of our FanDuel LOE 3. Lou and I make three player prop picks each. We're up like 40 units over the last couple of years, folks. If you want to get in on the action, follow along. That's our big show on Fridays. But after that, we're getting back to it. Like you said, Mike, make sure you go subscribe to all of your respective shows. Make sure our Philly fans go follow Locked On Phillies, Locked On Sixers, Locked On Flyers. Same for all the teams in Boston. You definitely made some fans today in Philly, Mike. I think there's a lot of mutual respect between these teams. And at the end of the day, I think it's two cities that just love watching some good football. Absolutely. Two cities that love watching some good football and like seeing the Bills and the Chiefs fall. So we can all be very united behind that. No, I'm kidding, folks. I just made a lot more enemies in Buffalo than I already have and probably in Kansas City as well. But you know what? We're talking Pats Eagles this week and we absolutely love it. But thank you all for taking time out of your busy schedules to join us here either on Locked On Patriots, on Locked On Eagles, or on any of the Locked On NFL shows. Please make sure to subscribe, follow, and download wherever you get your podcasts to get the latest episodes as soon as they're available. On behalf of my Philadelphia Paisan, Gino Camilleri, I am Mike DeBate reminding you to stay safe and to stay well and to be the change that you all wish to see in the world. Have a great day, everyone, and we look forward to having you right back here soon 
on Lock On Eagles and Locked On Patriots.